It's happy to be here. Say amen. amen. Good. Well, if you're just tuning in, we've been praying for you guys. This is a special day. It's my favorite time of the year. And I tell you, it's not just once or twice in a year, right? It's my favorite time to celebrate what Christ has done. Not just today, but as a believer, we have the promise of God and we can walk in the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. And so today we really just hone in on that and just thank God for his great sacrifice. And so many times people say, well, well, what are we celebrating? We're celebrating that we are free from sin because of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's one way to heaven, amen? And his name is Jesus. John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I want to kind of do a little backstory. You know, a lot of times I'm, I'm praying, I said, Lord, you know, a lot of times you have people to come to church on Christmas and Easter and they kind of know the story and I said but that is the story and all week I said how do you want me to unpack the story and he brought me back to Romans chapter 8 which you all know is that probably one of my favorites right there therefore there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus and we're going to unpack that today so we got a little teaching and a preaching and I hope you guys enjoy that so I want to start today letting you know that because of what Christ what we celebrate today the risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, what we celebrate today, when we put our faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, we are secure in Him. Our sins are separated as far as the east is to the west. Now, I'll tell you what, I believe that Christians should be some of the happiest people around, don't you? Because they know they're forgiven. That don't mean you act crazy or anything else. Y'all supposed to say amen there, right? Yeah. <laughs> But man, they should know us by our joy and by our love because you know what? We understand what's at stake and we understand who gave their life. So I want to kind of just unpack a few things here. And you know, everything was going good in the beginning there and back in Genesis, but then sin entered in. And we all know the story. We think about that. The, the, the pages of, of the Bible opened up in the Garden of Eden and talking about different things here. But through disobedient, it changed and disrupted that perfect setup that they have. Through sin and death entered into the world through Adam and Eve. So there's a great separation between God and us, man and, man and God. And so they were separated. And guess what came with that? Shame, guilt, blame. Let's be honest. We ever, we ever deal with some of that sometimes? This is going to help somebody today. Let me tell you what. You've been forgiven in Christ. Amen. And I hope you hear that today and take it with you. But when we look through that, we, they, what happened was when they, when they turned and bought the lie of the enemy... They found out, guess what? That's exactly what it was. It was a lie. But today we've got the truth and his name is Jesus. And through that, Adam and Eve tried to cover up their own sin. Matter of fact, they became aware of their nakedness. But what happens is this. When we come to a point in our life and we realize that our sin separates us from God, a lot of times we shriek back. Sometimes we hide. And it takes more than a fig leaf, right? To wash away your sin. It took the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I wanted to share that great sacrifice here because of God's mercy, he decided not to punish Adam and Eve according to what they deserved. But instead, he found an innocent animal in the garden and made skins of the animal and used, to cover, used that to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. This is the first sacrifice in the Bible. And it became a pattern of the salvation out of Le Leviticus 16 of how God would deal with our sin. But God chooses to substitute as his own sacrifice himself for all mankind. Let me tell you, you know what that's called? It's called grace. It's called Jesus. So that kind of the unpacking a few things there. But I wanted to get right into this. This is what we have. So many times people don't realize what you have in Christ. Because of Christ, because of what we celebrate today, because of what he's done for us. He poured his blood out. He paid our sin debt in full. He paid the penalty that we deserve, amen, so that we can grab hold of that by faith and walk in a full life with him, amen. So if you got your Bibles today, you can turn with me to Romans chapter 8. I've got most of the verses up here, but I always encourage you to bring your Bible. And it says this here, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But I want to go a little bit deeper. We have peace with him. We have freedom with him. We have security with him. So I'm going to unpack a few things. Like I always say, a little preaching and a teaching. So I'm going to go through the first four verses of Romans chapter 8. And it says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-given spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control 
over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow the sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit of God. Somebody say amen for what God has done for us. Ben, I tell you what, we need to really have that on the full forefront of our heart. So as a child of God, we need to be not sitting on the sidelines of life, but engaging in a, in a awesome, healthy, vibrant relationship with the Lord so that we could take it out to the highways and the hedges, right? Let me ask you a question. If somebody went by your house and a car was on fire or whatever like that out in front of your house and somebody says, I need a Christian, would they knock on your door? Would they say, hey, I know that guy over here. I know that lady over there is praying. I pray that they would come right to your door and say, I know they know Jesus. Amen. And I like using those little things to make us think sometimes because I'm going to tell you what. It's not about what you say. People don't care what you say. People want to see how you live. Right? Now, I'm going to tell you right here what I say every Sunday. I'm preaching to me first. That does not mean Buddy's got it all together, but I'm doing my best to follow the one who does. Amen? And I'm going to keep on seeking him, and I'm going to get up when I fall down, and I'm going to keep on rolling. But I want us to be encouraged because i tell you this. We have peace with Christ because of what Christ has done. How many people like peace? If you don't have any peace, you want it. I'm going to tell you what. people. You got people that spend a lot of money for peace. You got people think that they can buy it. Now, I think you could probably rent it for a little bit, right? <laughs> but it's always going to, you don't have the peace that passes all understanding. So I want to tell you today about that peace that passes all understanding. And we're going to go through here a little bit. If you got your hand out, if God shows you something, write down a few things that will encourage you through the week. Back to my verse again. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus, amen? So when we come to this, it says no condemnation. When does it say that? It says When? So now, amen, now. See, a lot of times we live in the past and we just get all wrapped around it. Man, you know, but you don't know my past. Well, you know what? You don't know my past. And sometimes people will like to bring up your past, right? Let me tell you a little story. You know I got one or two. This is a cool day for me because when I'm sitting, I mean, I'm like in a time machine. The guy I rent from here, the guy we rent from here is the grandson of the man who led me to the Lord. Amen. Come on, man. <laughs> Tell me God ain't working in that. I bet you 30 years ago when somebody came outside of church to tell me about Jesus, they weren't thinking, and not only that, when my grandson gets a place, you're going to rent it, and you're going to tell everybody about Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Take that, devil, right? That's amazing. Matter of fact, one of the guys when we're doing all this, he says, uh, he says, you know what? Uh, Everything's coming along good over there. He says, uh, does your congregation know you play guitar like you used to? You know? He says, you, you, you made a lot of money over there way back in the day before they had this all converted back, right? I said, yeah, man, they know I play, they pretty much know everything. Probably too much, right? <laughs> but they still keep coming. <laughs> they still keep showing me God's grace. He said, no, no, like when you jump up on the pool table, you're playing that behind here. I said, they don't want me to do that now. They do not want me to do that now. <laughs> like, we need to pray for a healing for that boy right there. <laughs> but, so, you know, see, people want to bring you to your, to your past. I, that's okay. Because I believe everything that we experience, God can use for the bigger picture. I didn't say God causes everything. But I know in Romans 8, 20, he says he works all things together for the good for those who love him. Do you love the Lord today? Let's keep on going. So we hear this. We throw this condemnation out a lot. What does it really mean? The action of condemning someone to a punishment or sentence. Look at this. Because of what we celebrate today, because of us having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, putting our faith and trust in him, there's no condemnation. Now, I want to follow this up. That doesn't mean you live any way you want, but you're free to live for Christ now, amen? You're free to live for him because of what he's done for us. And that's what I think is an amazing thing here. We go back and forth and say, man, Lord, you are amazing. So look at this. Jesus took our punishment, Romans 5, 8. Now, I love this verse, and you'll see why real fast. It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, a lot of times we think we got to clean up, right? Right? We got, we got to do this, and I got to give, and I got to do, and I got to do all these different things for God to love me. But what does that say? It says, but God does what? He demonstrates love produces action, doesn't it? For God so loved the world, what did he do? That he gave. 
Right? So, so, so look at this here. So, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's going to free somebody today. Don't try to clean up all that stuff. Just give up and look up and trust Jesus. Amen? That's what we're talking about today. Let's keep on rolling. And think about here. It said, what man could not do, Jesus did for all who will receive him as Savior. So many times we look at stuff and we, and we go through the Bible and, and we say, how does that impact my life? Well, let me tell you, if it's in there, it's for you. You need to look at it and run it through the lens of the Lord and see how God is moving in our situation. Look at this. Jesus knew that it was impossible for mankind to live up to the perfect standards of holiness. Man's sin was piling up. Amen. And there, were, there wasn't even enough animals to do the necessary sacrifice. So Jesus put on flesh, lived a life without sin, and willingly gave his life for you. Have you received that? That's the message. That's the message right there. So what man couldn't do, Christ did for you. Will you receive that? Will you relieve that? See, you can hear about it, but like Angela says, sometimes it's got to drop from your head to your heart. Have you received that? Have you put your faith in that? And I said it a little early, but I think most of us know this right here, but look at this. John 3, 16, read that with me. For so God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. How long is eternal life? Forever. See, we have a God that is forever. He's not a part-time God. He's always there. And that's the amazing thing. When your friends are not there, or so-called friends, when your mom and dad ain't there, your grandma ain't there, the boss ain't there, God's still there. Somebody say amen. That's a good place to say amen. Because I'm going to tell you what, that's where the peace comes in. When everything else is stripped away, let me tell you, we know that God is for us. Let me tell you what, when we walked in here, there was a lot of work to do behind the scenes here. But God pulled his people together as we did our best to honor him in all we do and start working all the things together for the good. Do you realize how much talent is in this room? It's amazing. You say, well, I can't do that. I can't. Let me tell you what. Between going and giving and praying and serving, let me tell you, it is a beautiful tapestry of the Lord. Amen? Amen. When I'm looking out here, I'm thinking about, man, this is so cool. Look how God is working in these areas. Look how God is, is doing stuff. How, let me just ask you this. Have you ever asked yourself, how could God use me? Man, I was the only one? How many people have said that? <laughs> you know what? You go, how in the world could God use me? I share this story many times. You're looking at a guy that went to school from kindergarten till he graduated. They got sick every day before school. I was nervous. I, couldn't, I, I didn't like doing book reports, any of those things now. And now I don't shut up. <laughs> and my wife said, amen. <laughs> right. Because, see, I got the message now. I got something to talk about now. I got the truth. And I'm not going to sit on the sidelines. I wasted 30 years doing my own thing when I should have been preaching the word. But let me tell you what. God can roll back time like that. He is not bound by time. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Man, I think back sometimes. Who would have thought? Look at this. God's got a great sense of humor. I got saved from a Bible track on Halloween night in 1995. Oh, it was amazing. You know, back then, uh, Thomas was younger and everything else, and, and I was, we were going to go get some candy and do some different things like that, and you're only going to go to the safe place. You're going to go to grandma's and pawpaws. And I come around the corner, and them crazy church folks, how many people say that sometimes, right? I can say that because I am one of them now, right? They're standing out there, and they said, hey, tracks and treats. I didn't even know what a track was. A Bible track has got God's word on there pointing you to Jesus, Amen. So they came out, we stopped, I said, oh, here they come. Here they come. I'm just being real because I was right there with you. Here they come. And I, I, hey, just want to tell you, God loves you. Here you go. He gave us some candy. I went on down the road. I said, Phew, made it back. Right. I come on back. See, if you got a praying mother-in-law, <laughs> things will change in your life. Thank you, Grandmama. Because I know she was praying. Boy, when I pulled up to get her daughter in that Corvette with a mullet, I know she's going, Woo, baby, let's shoot a little bit higher. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But she told me, she said, God's going to use you. I said, yeah, to say, yeah, you don't want to do like that. You know what I mean? You don't want to be like that guy. But you know what? When we get out of the way, God will use you. Amen. God will use you. Never think you're unusable. That's a lie from the devil. So I got home that night, and I started looking through the candy to make sure everything was good, and I pulled this Bible track out. And it said, if you die tonight, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? And I go, I'm going to hell. If I was to die tonight at that time, I would go to hell. I knew about Jesus, but I had never received Jesus. I didn't understand about the peace. I didn't understand that he demonstrates his own love in this. While we were yet sinners, he cried for I didn't know that. I went to church once when I was five, once when I was 30. If you're a rock and roller, that is not something you're thinking about. You're thinking about me, just only me, right? Just yourself, right? Well, let me tell you what. I read that. And I said, Lord, I need you. Come into my life. And I'm bothered because God's doing a work in my heart. And Denise come in the bedroom and I go, yeah, everything's cool. <laughs> you know how guys are. And I said, I made a command decision. We're going to that church next week. She goes, thank the Lord. Right? So all week, is this happening to you all this week? You probably said, we're going to go to church. All week, the devil said, you don't need to go to church. Right? The devil said, you don't need to go to church because if you live so close to the church, they're probably going to want you to use the weed eater. <gasps> the weed eater. I don't like no weed eater, man. That's bad business right there. I'm not sure. I can't find a scripture, but I believe there's weed eaters in hell. I'm going to tell you what. The ones with, they'll probably be the ones that only got this much uh, pull chain on it. <laughs> Go a couple of feet. So anyway, we went. All week, it was all these different ways. Oh, I'm too busy. I'm too tired. What's going on? All this. But we got there. And we got last. We came in last, right? And everybody knows everybody at church, usually a small church, went in there. And they say, is this your first time? And we go, you can't lie. You're in church. You go, yes. Oh, man, we got the pins. We got the everything. They're just loading us up, man. They're just loving on us. And they began to start talking about the love of Christ. And the guy had like a big easel up there, right, for a painting. And he had it backwards. And he says, how many people would like a check for a million dollars? I told Denise, we should have got here early. <laughs> See, you can do in your hair. We could have got here early, right? <laughs> you going to pay for that one. <laughs> so anyway, he said, well, I'm not talking about money. I just want to kind of get you got our attention on that. He said, why is it that you walk away from so much more that money can't buy? And I start remembering about that Bible track. That you can't buy your way to heaven. You can't be good enough to, have, to go to heaven. You need Jesus Christ if you're going to heaven. Amen. This sacrifice that we're talking about today, that we celebrate today, that he has risen, that's what you need. Not just me, everybody. And so let me tell you right there, when you receive that, things start to change in life. And when they begin to pray and ask that I want to give my life to the Lord. I had to start repenting real fast. I was knocking people down, getting up front and everything else. I was just, I need Jesus. See, there's a time in your life that you're going to find out you need Jesus. Yes. It might be today. It might have been 30 years ago. But I'm going to tell you, you always need Jesus. How about that? Amen. Let me ask, I, I like asking this. How many people have been walking with the Lord for 10 years? Raise your hand. 15 years? 20 years? Got 20, 20, got 20, 25 years? 25 years? All right, we're going to take 35 years. Do I hear 50 years? Woo, 50 years. All right. Now, I know y'all look real young. You didn't want to tell me that, but y'all doing this for Jesus, so I appreciate it. In 50 years, the folks that said 50 years, can I get your hand raised up again? In 50 years, has the Lord ever let you down? Never. I ask that on all the places I preach. I have never had somebody tell me, he let me down. Let me tell you what. That's a pretty good track record. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Well, let's jump on back here. So not only that, I want you to see this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. See, Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to save. Remember our title? Because of Christ. Because of Christ, we have peace with God. We've been reconciled, made right with him through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He poured out his blood willingly, lived a life without sin to be the perfect sacrifice and died on that cross for us. There was needed to be a payment, but it had to be perfect. And his name is Jesus, amen. How many people are happy to know the Lord is a risen Savior? Give the Lord a hand clap. He's a risen Savior, man. We don't, we don't have a God in a box. We 
We have a God in our heart. When we call on the name of Jesus, he gives us his spirit. The same Holy Spirit that rose him from the grave can live in each of us to lead, guide, and direct us. Look at this. He came into the world. Now, he didn't come into the world to condemn it, but to be saved, that he could save the world through his sacrifice. That gives me peace. How about you? How about this? Well, guess what else we get? We have freedom because of Christ. Let's look at this. Because of him, we have freedom. It gets bigger and better as we go, but we get to grab hold of it by faith. Look at this. I'm going to walk through this a little bit. Verse 2, it says, and because you belong to him. Do you belong to him? Let me hear you say amen. amen. The power of the life-given spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Man, how many warriors do we got? We can worry sometimes. I serve them all the time. I come from a long, long line of warriors. When my grandma was living, my mama called, she said, oh, hey, what you worrying about? I, I said, what is that about? But you know what? Why do we worry when we know who holds our future? You know? I'm not saying that, that, that things aren't concerning, but I really try to give it to the Lord. Let's keep on going. You are no longer shackled to sin, but alive in Christ. People say, has Buddy always been that hyper? Yes. But you know what? I was hyper for the wrong reason. See, I was hyper for the, for the things of the world, but now I am hyper for the things of the word. I want people to know Jesus, right? I want people to be excited about that. I want them to see the healing power of God. I want them to know that they've been forgiven. How about you? We live so far under our spiritual calling, it's amazing, because we don't walk this out. But you know what? You're hearing the message today. You hear it today. Man, plug in. Read the word. We're alive in Christ. Let's take a look at this. Ephesians 2 says this. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. And even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. Man, how does that make you feel when you think about that? Because of his love for us. See, we think we got to clean up, we got to look a certain way and everything else like that. Let me tell you, God will take you where you are. But I'm not saying don't look your best. Do you think I got to tell another story for you? I had to do a funeral this week. And uh, right before I had to do a funeral, I broke my glasses. Bloop. So I got my other glasses. And I say, these must be my old glasses because I can't read this. So I went up to, to the place. I said, look, man, can you hook me up? I need you to fix my glasses. He said, I don't have a part for that. I said, brother, you can do it. I believe you can do it. You can fix these. Because I'm like, in a couple of hours, I got to be at this funeral. I'm going to be going. I'm gonna be, I got to have longer arms or something, man, because I can't see what I need to read, right? I can see y'all perfect. Y'all beautiful. But when I get up here, I can't even tell what time it is, right? I got to have them glasses. So I'll tell you this story. I, I'm, I'm starting to worry just a little bit. But you know what? God is so good. There was a guy, and his name was Bud. Bud hooked me up. I said, Bud, you can do it. He said, let me see what I can come up with. And he came back, and he said, here you go. Try these on. And I put them on. I said, that feels good. He said, but they're two different sides on them. I said, man, I can't do no funeral with two different sides on it. He said, no, no, I was thinking about it. He said, just pre preach with that side to the casket. <laughs> so I did. I ain't lying to you. I, I can't even make that up. I was like, what? He said, yeah. He said, hey, look, do this. So I'm preaching. I go, amen. How about that? Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you, Lord. Give him one of them. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> guess what? They still messed up. <laughs> I love it. But you know, we got freedom in Christ. You can laugh a little bit. It's fun being saved. I don't see why you got the best gift ever given and you're going to sit around with a shovel lip, man. Jesus is risen. So let's walk through this a little bit here. Got to use a man in the glass place to turn around and make a smile on your face, man. That's good stuff. So you know, right, when I looked through this, I wanted to read what I had put down the other night. I tucked myself away up here for a few hours, man, and I was just writing and praying. And, and I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you something. Every one of these seats has been prayed over. All around it has been prayed over. You know what? God knew you were coming. And I'm glad you're here. Let's look at this. I said, this is free in here, friends. 
Because of his great love for you, he made you alive with Christ. He showed his grace and mercy to you. God uses us and he works through us in his perfect sacrifice of Christ. And he sees us and seats us in the heavenly room. When God looks at your life as a believer, he sees you through the perfect sacrifice of Christ. Somebody say amen. Amen. Your, your sin has been separated as far as the east is from the west. He's buried them into the sea of forgetfulness. So let me tell you what. We need to be, y'all ought to be walking taller when you come out of here. Because the world will turn around and bring you down. You can't, you should have, man. Well, if you was a little smarter, if you a little, made a little more money. That's all these things. God said, I'll take you right where you are. Woo, I'm glad of that. I am happy about that, amen. And you know what? He does that every day. He does that every day. Let's take a look at this. As we go through here, I said, you have great value. I talk to people all the time, and I think one of the biggest things is we can get down sometimes, and we get overwhelmed. And people, many times, listen to the lie of the enemy, and, and, and they buy the lie, and they think, I could never do that. I don't feel like that I amount much. Let me tell you what. If you're breathing... You amount to a whole lot. God has his spirit in you, and he wants to use you to glorify himself. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. He wants to use your life. He wants to use your life. Here's the question. Are you willing? Are you willing? I said all the time, I said, I, when the Lord called me to the ministry, I gave him a list of my disqualifications. <laughs> he didn't care. You know what he did? He pointed me back to Jesus. I'm going to do the same thing. He said, I'll still use you. i never forget. I was going to a Bible study. I shared it a couple weeks ago. And I knew the Lord was moving on my heart. My mother-in-law praying even harder now. It's all her fault. <laughs> Thank you, Grandmama. And I knew that the Lord was calling me to preach. I said, Lord, I don't know any Hebrew, Greek, or anything else. I can do it pretty good with slang with buckrow. But I don't know anything else. And he, he, he directed me back to his word. And he directed me back to David. And Moses, and Paul, and Peter, and all the folks that had missed the mark along the way. And I remember looking in that mirror, I go, ha, ha, I'm your man. I'm just as messed up as they are. I mean, if you could use me, I'm in. You know? And thankfully, God said, I'll use you. But I want to tell you something else. Then someday I was looking at that mirror, I go, ho, 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 ho. I know I got the best deal, Lord, but I don't know about you. I don't know if you got the best deal. But he'll take us in the midst of our mistakes and our shortcomings. And he loves us. And he sees the best in your day when we can't even see it ourselves. So as we look at this, God raised us up with him and seated us in the heavenly realms. He sees us as the finished product. Amen. Everybody doing good so far? Now, how many people like security? I'm going to give you the best security thing going right here. You are sealed with Jesus. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Look at this. I want to share a few things here. Romans 8, 35. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or, danger or in danger or threatened with death? In other words, if you're having a rough life, does that mean God doesn't love you anymore? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you what. I'd rather go through a rough day with Jesus than go through a good day without him. How about you? Because I'm going to tell you what, when everything's stripped away, you're going to remember this conversation right here. You're going to say, what was that guy talking about? What was that guy talking about? You know, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about his love for you. I'm talking about the value that he places on each one of us. If you ever doubt what you're worth, if you ever doubt how much God loves you, look to the cross, man. Friday was a rough day on that cross. But we in Sunday now. Hey, it's Sunday now. He is risen and he is risen indeed let's keep on rolling here we need to walk in the victory i said we all go through things but we don't have to go through them alone i never ever ever want to minimize what somebody's going through but i want to maximize the one who will get you through the other side amen not in the notes as usual but i'm gonna share something with y'all Many times I've shared this, and usually a lot of times it comes to when I'm, I'm preaching a funeral, we think about Jesus and the disciples, and Jesus has fed the 5,000, and he sends the guys back across the boat, uh, uh, the water in the boat, and man, a storm comes up and everything else, and the guys are out on that water, man. And it's coming in. It's coming in. Just picture yourself there. A lot of you guys are boat people out here and everything else. And man, just, it's, it's rough. 
they're out there for hours and hours. And all of a sudden, they see somebody walking across the water. Somebody say, is it a ghost? What is it? Who is it? What is it? And then Peter, oh, yeah, the guy that messed up a lot of stuff, you know, kind of short temper, talked a lot. I like that guy, right? I can relate to him, right? He says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come on out there. I'm coming. Come on. Woo. See, everybody wants to talk about Peter, right? Then nobody else got out of the boat, right? Everybody, I'll be right here, over here. Yeah, right. He got out of the water, and he started walking on the water. See, sometimes as a disciple, we've got to get out of the boat. Come on now, and walk on the water by faith, amen? Spiritually speaking, right? But you know what? Let me just tell you this. So he starts, y'all know the story. He gets out, and he's walking, and all of a sudden, he gets his eyes off the Lord and gets his eyes on the storm. Have you ever done that? I think we all have. Today, let's get our eyes back on Jesus, amen? And he begins to go down. And he says, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus grabs him, gets a hold of him, takes him back on the boat. This is what the Lord taught me, taught me in this story. But back on the boat, and the storm stopped. So you can read right through that. I did many times. And the Lord said, no, I want you to see something. When did I stop the storm? When he was back in the boat. I carried him through the storm. I carried him through the high winds. I carried him through the water. It was looking rough. And when we got back and we were on the boat and everything was safe, then I stopped the storm. Notice he didn't stop the storm and then put him on the boat. Now, that might not speak to y'all a lot. When the Lord showed me that, I go, whoo, because sometimes I'm in the storm. I'm just going, stop the ride, stop the ride. How about y'all? Okay, I got to ask you this. How many people remember that little space park on Mercury Boulevard? How many people got spun around on that little thing? You didn't know my sister. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going, Donald's taking that thing. I'm going, woo, 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 woo. Life can be like that. Let me off. I'm dragging my foot, right? Things in life can start going like that. <laughs> Everybody's going, yeah, I know I've been on that thing. Oh, yeah. In life, you just start going around and around and around. But, you know, sometimes God will allow that to go on through and then bring you back to a place that he can establish some new things in your life. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a, a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. See, that's why we need to be born again. We need to turn from our old nature, turn to the risen Savior. And God says, you're mine. I'll see you with my spirit. Man, what a gift we have in Jesus. Let's keep on rolling here. 37. No, despite all things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. See, it's always about the love. It's always about his love. It's his love for you. See, true love, you don't earn love. You don't earn grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. He gives you grace because he loves you, right? How much grace do we give? I've had people know me for a long time. They go, man, you're a lot mellower than you used to be. And everybody up on the front row goes, no, I don't think he is. I used to be real short, man, on stuff, you know. Ah, whatever. I know y'all couldn't see that, right? But man, I think about how much God's forgiven me. And I think about the grace that God applies to my life. And I go, man, who, who am I? I need to do the same thing. I need to walk in that same thing as my, my Heavenly Father. So that's what I try to do. I want to show them grace. I want to show them that, that over, overwhelming victory that we have in Christ. Let's keep on rolling here. Build a little more momentum here in 38. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, nor even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. See, today, that's what we celebrate. But this is what we should celebrate every day. It's a big difference when you're walking in forgiveness instead of you're walking in condemnation. I believe as we read God's word and realize who we are in, in, in the word, when we understand what God has done for us, it's like pulling bricks off our back. 
How about you guys? When I turn around, I go, wait a minute. This is what God said about me. You got to make it personal, right? See, a lot of times we take everything personal, but we don't make everything personal that we should. He said that you are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God has prepared for us to do. Ephesians 2.10, he talks about that. What is it that God's called you to do? What is it that God wants to work in your life with the gifting that he's given you? Hey, let me tell you what, everybody, I got to see so many gifts that people have. I didn't know it was such a gift to hang a picture until I tried to hang one. I thought the building was crooked. Everything, it's not me, you know. I mean, I'm just telling you. So many gifted people behind the scene. So many people calling and, and, and just being encouraging. And I'll tell you what, I want you to know this. That, Like I said earlier, there is power in prayer. You know, our brothers and sisters in the Philippines have been praying for this day. Look at this. Packed out, man. And I'm not about just putting people in the building. I want to put Christ in your heart. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. See, when he's lifted up, when the Lord's lifted up, he's going to draw people to himself. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing and everything else. When God is elevated, he's going to draw people to himself. And that is our heart. I want you all to take a look over here. Can you see that? It says, making the most of every opportunity to share Jesus Christ with the world. Now, you could call it a mission statement. That's fine. That's a heart statement. That's what we're about. We want people to know Jesus all over the world. But sometimes it starts right next door. Sometimes it starts at our house. How many know sometimes it's harder to reach your family than it is anybody else? Oh, they're just going through a phase. Yeah, they're just doing this or anything. I don't want to get out of this phase because it's not a phase. My life has been transformed because of what Christ has done for me. How about you? I didn't deserve it. I wouldn't pick me. Any of those things. How about you? God says you're worth it. I want you to hear about the value that God places on your life. Think about the cross on Friday. He was beaten. He was spit on. Bruised. But he overcame for us. So friends, as we take this time right here, I pray if you've never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, consider what I'm going to share with you now. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for today. And I thank you, Lord, that you are a risen Savior. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that today, just like we've learned, for a child of God, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Lord, that we are secure in you, that we have forgiveness of our sin. And if there's one here today that's never put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that today is the day. You say, buddy, what, what do I need to do? The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. He says, turn from your sin and turn to me. Trust me. Is that you today? Do you have that peace that passes all understanding? Let me ask you a question. What is that worth? It's worth everything. You know what you were worth? Jesus laying down his life for you. So today, don't leave here the same way you came in. Be refreshed. Be open to the truth of God's grace. Grab a hold of the truth of the gospel message. The gospel means good news, and the good news is this, that Jesus died for yours and my sin, the sin of the world, but he is risen. And if you believe that today, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And I love this here. He says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If that's your prayer, pray with me today. Lord, come into my life. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Lord, today I'm trusting in your finished work of the cross. Lord, come into my life forever. If that's your prayer today, don't leave here without telling somebody, say, you know what? Today was a game changer. Today was a life changer. Now, if you're here and you said, I put my faith and trust in the Lord, but it, the road's been long and it's been tough, and, and sometimes I just feel like I'm overwhelmed. Amen praying for my brothers and sisters today, Lord, that have been through so much, that have had so many things going on in their life. 
Lord, what your plan is for us is so much better and so much grander than what we could ever think of. Lord, I ask you to reveal yourself to them in those moments and those times that they are not alone. Father, I come to you today and I ask you to take this message and transform lives, Lord. We humbly come to you today. Lord, we know it's all about you. Lord, I thank you for the victory that we have over sin because of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you for each one here and those that will be listening later. Father, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Well, at this time, I want to ask my uh, ushers to come up that I spoke to a little earlier, and we're going to share in some communion. If you guys could come up, we're going to have the, the um, offering come on up here. to bring that on out. Yeah. Communion. Okay. There he is. Very good. Mike, yeah, you guys come on up here. Come on around here. Let's hand that off to Mike and them. They can do that. Now, I mentioned this earlier. We're going to stay in this turn this way, and I will pray. Thanks, guys. Mike, thank you. Good, good. Everybody got everything they need? Wonderful. Good deal. Here we go. You can tell we rehearsed this, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I, I want to say this. You know, a lot of times I laugh and joke because you know what? It's just life. And you know, sometimes we just got to laugh at ourselves sometimes. We don't have it all perfect. Amen. But we follow the one it is. I'm so grateful for what God has done in my life. How about you? And I want to tell you, God is good and God is for you. So as, this, as we come to this time today, I want to share a few things. And, and we take the Lord's Supper and communion. And I said it's a visible representation symbolizing the death of Christ for our sins. It reminds us of his great sacrifice when Jesus laid down his life for us. And the truth of our great promise of his return. And it's a reminder of our salvation as a complete work of Christ who forgave all our sin. So as we celebrate this, examine your heart. If there's anything that God wants you to, to work on in your life, just give it to him. He's going to work on it. If there's unconfessed sin, say, Lord, help me in this area of my life. But today, let us rejoice as we take of the bread and the juice. What I ask you is if the ushers pass that out, just go ahead and open that up and we'll take that together. And take a few minutes and think about what Christ has done for you. Go ahead, thanks. such a blessing to be able to come together, especially today as we celebrate our risen Savior. But it's a great time each week as we come together to celebrate what God has done. And I want to encourage you guys to think about all that God has given you and all that God has done and what we have in Christ. And as we come to this time, let God just work on your heart. What is it? Would you be bold enough to say, Lord, what is it that you have for me? Lord, what is it that you want me to do for the kingdom of God? And I tell you what I found in my life as many times is this. Thank you so much. Is that it's more about availability than it is ability. And we thank God for all he does. Amen. I want to share a little something with you from God's, God's word. 
It says here, it says, On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body in which I give for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we can take this now. Lord, thank you that you gave your body for us, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you love us, that you laid down your life for us. But, Lord, you rose again. We celebrate that today. We praise you. And, Lord, as we remember this, we thank you, Lord, that you are our provider, our sustainer. You are our Savior. Partake of the bread. Then in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This is the cup of my new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed by my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as I drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes. Let's take of the juice. As we celebrate that today, let us realize that it's all about him. Let us realize that God has given his very best for us. And I want to share a few things because of Christ as we get ready to wrap this up. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Baptism doesn't save you. Communion doesn't save you. Faith in the risen Savior saves you. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to sign out to our friends online. Share the message. We love you and we praise your name, Jesus. I pray that lives were touched today through the message of Christ. Amen.